Hey, what's up everybody? Johannes here. As we are all more or less grounded with the virus going around, I thought it would be a good idea to start a little series of masterclasses in the next couple of days, just to keep you all entertained and to keep you all practicing. I know this is a time when we all feel down and we all feel like we're falling into a hole. Maybe your campus is closed. Maybe uh, your orchestra is uh, going on a break. Maybe you had a couple of performances scheduled. So I'm going to try to make a masterclass every day. If you have something that you want to talk about, then let me know through the comments below. And I'd be very happy to talk about whatever is on your mind, whatever you're working on, whatever is challenging right now. I know a lot of you, just like me, are using this time to practice and um, to really uh, get back into uh, the basics of um, playing. And maybe this is a really good time, although of course everybody is a little worried and um, probably also bored at home. Um, but I think we can all use this time to our advantage. And we're going to start today um, with uh, the second movement of the Saint-Saëns Cello Concerto. A couple of weeks ago I made a video The video got a lot of responses and one of them was from uh, from Niccolo Zappavigna. I hope I say this name correctly. Um, and Niccolo was saying, uh, Dear uh, Johannes, how can I practice this passage? Um, I practice, but I don't have any progress. And uh, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to make this video today about the second movement of the Sans-Sans Cello Concerto, the famous six stoplet passage. The only thing that you'll need is a metronome and time and you know there's no shortage of time so get that metronome ready. We're going to start with working on the frame which is the octave. And we're going to start on the D and then work our way down chromatically using the whole bow. And just for fun, because we're not only practicing for uh, sans sens, but we're also practicing for our general fitness, um, we're just going to play the octaves upwards again as well. to schedule your practice over time so we're going to set the metronome to 60. Today you're going to start with 60, tomorrow you're going to do 62, the day after you're going to do 64. You get the idea. You just push your limits of tempo further and further. Um, for the next exercise where we're going to use the metronome already, I want to add some stability in the left hand. So I'm going to work um, not only on the frame but I'm also going to add um, several fourths and of course, the fifth of the thumb. We have the fifth. Then we have a fourth with one, th one in thumb. And we have a fourth with two in first. So the next exercise could look like this. is really quite healthy but also challenging for the hand as soon as you feel that your thumb is not able to support the weight and sort of going like this if you have a lock joint stop practicing and go back to having a round joint and if you feel any kind of pain during any of these exercises take a break for at least 90 seconds or two minutes Relax the hand, come back to it. Um, we want to make sure that there is no pain involved. So these are all exercises for the left hand. Now we want to start um, training the right hand as well. You should only start doing these following exercises for the bow hand once you're really secured safe intonation um, of the octaves going up and down. I personally love practicing these six toplets in a rhythmical manner. Mm-hmm. 
Now you can really get creative. Again, you have to work your way up with the metronome. So you start at 60 and then you work your way up to 62, 64 and so on. Um, so that you really work on this step by step. Never practice it faster than you can do it. Um, but also necessarily don't stay slower as you can do it for too long. You want to get into that perfect spot which we call flow where um, you are right in between it being a little too hard and a little bit too easy. So right in that perfect spot, that is where you learn the best. Let's pretend for a moment that you've already worked your way up to, let's say 90 on the metronome and you want to practice the whole passage. Of course, we're gonna practice it how it's supposed to be, which is going down, but then we're also gonna go up again, just for fun. Cellists often ask me how to play spiccato and I think the trick really is to think of the movement of the bow starting off the string rather than from the air. Um, so when you practice this slowly, maybe use a pretty martellato bow stroke. So that when you speed it up later on, you have a really good grip on the string. It looks like it's bouncing, but actually it is firmly on the string and it just bounces a little bit, but actually the hair rarely uh, leaves the string. Now let's assume you've done all your prep work, you've solidified the frame of the hand, You've worked on different rhythmical patterns for the bow. Um, now it is time to think of this passage musically. Now, these are um, 12 groups that you have, and you should think of larger chunks. I like to think of either groups of four, then you have three chunks, or you think of groups of three, then you have four chunks. So let's start with groups of three, which means you have four chunks. The first chunk is going to be a little bit tentative, second chunk is going to accelerate, the third chunk is going to stay firm, and the fourth chunk again is going to slow us down. Let me show you what I mean. This is the first chunk, rather tentative. Now for the second chunk we're going to accelerate the movement. For the Third chunk, we're gonna stay constant in the tempo, but rather quick. And for the fourth chunk, we're gonna slow down again. Let me show you what that sounds like when you group the four chunks together. Then you really have a musical slide going down. You can also use three chunks with groups of four. So let's say the first chunk is gonna just be accelerating the group. So we're gonna have four. I need to count correctly now. Then the second chunk is just gonna go straight forward. And the third chunk is gonna slow us down again. When you group those chunks together, it sounds like this. I am always a big fan of grouping um, 
technically difficult passages um, because then uh, your brain doesn't go into overload and doesn't get stuck with small details. The so small details we've worked on at the beginning of this class, yeah? Frame and different patterns. So we, we, we've done all our homework. At this point, we should, we should be able just to focus on musical groupings in this stuff. Let's not forget that every um, technically demanding passage contains a lot of music as well. So let's not just focus on getting it in tune, which is important, and not just clean in the bowl, which is important, but let's focus on what we actually want to do with all that technical work, which is make a musical phrase. I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know in the comments below what I should talk about uh, tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we can also have a live chat, a live Q&A right now. My internet is not fast enough for that, um, but we're going to work on that. And hopefully we can stay in close contact over the next few days and weeks. And let's just all hope uh, this whole nightmare is going to be over soon. See you soon. Bye-bye.